Welcome to Kadampa Podcasts. These podcasts offer practical solutions to daily challenges and help guide us to a happier and more peaceful state of mind. In each episode, you will find an extract from a teaching given by one of various Kadampa Buddhist teachers worldwide. All these teachings are inspired by the profound wisdom of Venerable Geshe Kelsan Gyatso Rinpoche, a Buddhist master for our time. We hope you will enjoy listening. One special characteristic, or maybe like the, the magical term, uh, or the key term to describe Kadampa Buddhism or Kadam Dharma is union. Union means it's the union of all what Buddha has taught with the special presentation of the stages of the path to enlightenment that originates from Atisha. So it's the union of all the teachings of Buddha and the practical presentation, how to put these teachings into practice. Okay. So without this special presentation, practical instructions, we had Buddha's teachings, but we, we wouldn't know what to do with that how to apply them, how to put them into practice. For example, in Malaga, at the recent festival, Buddhist festival, international festival, Gendra Kenrap, he used this beautiful analogy of a cake comparing Kadam Dharma to a cake. So imagine if you had all the ingredients, the flour, the eggs, the sugar, the oat milk or what, what have you, you know. But you had no instruction what to do with it, how to assemble it, how to create a cake from it. You wouldn't know how to do, what to do with it, you know. Like, <laughs> in my entire life, I, um, uh, sorry, that's a little bit confession time, but I'm a very spoiled boy and in my entire life, I only, uh, baked a cake only once, and that was um, for a girlfriend's birthday. <laughs> okay, as you do, <laughs> as a sign of affection. And um, I had no clue how to do it, how to go about. So fortunately, I had a very good friend who had already baked a cake, so, so he could show me like how to do it, you know, how to assemble all the ingredients. So we need something or someone giving us practical instructions, because otherwise we have all this information, 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 but we don't really know what to do with it. Do you know what I mean? For example, a friend of mine, uh, a Buddhist friend of mine, he used to study He's in his early 60s, I think he's about to retire by now. And he started off with Buddhism um, back in the 1980s or so. So he read uh, from a young age onwards, and he had a, a great fascination, read many books, studied many traditions, etc., and he told me for decades, he just read and read and read. But it was only when he came across Lamrim teachings that he knew what to do with all the knowledge that he had acquired previously. So that's the special quality of Kadam Dharma. It integrates everything that Buddha has taught into a system of instructions that show us, teach us what to do with it. You know? For example, Buddha gave many teachings on patience. And when you read these things, it's wonderful, it's beautiful. You know, when Buddha's explaining, there's no point in getting angry because anger doesn't undo the harm we have previously experienced. Or there's 
no suffering that is as bad, uh, so bad that it couldn't be accepted with a patient, positive mind, etc. All of that sounds beautiful. But how do I actually put this information into practice? That it is beginning to work for me. That it is beginning to help me. So for this, we need Kadam Dharma. You know, it's like the recipe that tells us what to do with the teachings of Buddha. Sorry, I was reading. <laughs> Time is running. Moreover, individual practitioners often receive different teachings from different teachers. And this also leaves them with the problem of how to integrate these teachings into one practice and how to apply all their Dharma knowledge into their daily lives. This is especially confusing for them if they have no desire to remain ordinary, but instead wish to become spiritual beings. For although they may wish to make progress on the spiritual path, they don't know how to begin progress, or complete it. During these spiritual, spiritually degenerate times, it is extremely difficult for human beings to solve their problems without a spiritual practice like Lam Rim. In spiritually degenerate times, it's extremely easy to distract ourselves from our problems. But distracting us is not the same like solving our problems. It is extremely difficult for them to control their minds, extremely difficult to, for them to develop a good heart, and it's extremely difficult for them to understand the entire path to enlightenment. Without Lam Rim, we do not know the meaning of samsara, and we do not know the meaning of liberation. We do, do not even know the meaning of ignorance, even though we possess it in abundance. I'm still dreaming of uh, offering a course in Berlin at KMC Berlin. Ignorance, what's that? Question mark. All these problems will be solved if we listen to and learn the Lamrim instructions, because in this way we shall understand all the different teachings of Buddha, and we shall know how to put them into practice. From this we can understand why the Lamrim instructions have become the main body of Buddha's teachings ever since Atisha gave them in Tibet. From a practical point of view, all Buddha's teachings are included in the practice of Lamrim. Fortunately, however, although Lamrim is so extensive and so profound, it is also very simple. Like you don't need to be the brightest candle on the tree, on the Christmas tree, to understand the meaning of the teachings. Lamrim is an open teaching, suitable for everyone not only for Buddhists, even people who are not Buddhists can listen to Lam Rim, practice and benefit from it. It is like a real medicine, curing the sufferings of anger, attachment and ignorance. And thus we are very lucky to have the opportunity to hear, to study and to practice it. The teaching and practice of Lam Rim is very unusual and very special. Someone trained in Lam Rim gradually finds a Dharma teaching in everything they encounter. And in this way, they can transform all their daily activities into their Dharma practice, even watching television, well, nowadays, 
people don't really watch television anymore because they have subscribed to the Disney Channel or I don't know what, or listening to the radio or podcast or what have you. To practice Kadam Dharma, you don't need to give up your jobs. You don't need to give up your normal relationships. But you can combine all your normal activity with Lam Rim. You're working, shopping, sleeping, enjoying yourself, eating your normal life. You can combine it with the practice of Lam Rim, transform it into a spiritual path. And in this way, all of your activities, they will become meaningful and lead to great results. Eventually, our daily life and Lamrim, they will become one. Therefore, this is a very special spiritual teaching. And Geshla says, I can tell you this from my own experience. And Geshla later on, he told one of his students, Lamrim is my very life. So, what I would like to talk about tonight is, so that had been a little bit the advertising part. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, a Kadampa Buddhist is somebody who takes all of Buddhist teachings and combines them into one essential spiritual practice the practice of the stages of the path to enlightenment. And having done that, that person then will combine their understanding, their experience with their daily activities. So two types of union that I would like to elaborate a little bit tonight. I hope all of that is not too abstract for you, but I feel it's important to know. So, how to unify all of Buddha's teachings with the practice of Lam Rim? So, that's very, very simple. Um, Geshe Kelsang's most recent publication or book is this book, The Mirror of Dharma. And this has two parts. The first part is entitled Training and Contemplation. And the second part is entitled Training and Meditation. Training and Meditation presents 15 essential Lamrim meditations, which are basically a condensation of all the essential stages of the path. So for us, it's impossible to unify Kadam Dharma with daily life without at least gaining some initial experience in these meditations. So um, what I would like to encourage you to do is um, you know, depending on your capacities, but use this presentation of 15 essential meditations which comprise the entire teachings of Buddhas in, in a very practical way and use this uh, for your own meditation practice. Maybe for a daily meditation practice, maybe for a weekly meditation practice. But Venerable Geshla himself, he published this book in 2018, I think. And he said this presentation is his best presentation of um, how to engage in the practice of meditation because it's incredibly clear. Because it explains the purpose of each of these 15 meditations which is the most important information for us, because we need to understand not what we are doing, but why we are doing. 
a specific meditation, you know, how it is benefiting me. And then it is explaining the actual meditation object and then how to meditate on it, like three essential things. So the Tibetan word for meditation you may have heard is gom, gom, gom. I don't know. Have you heard that word before? Yes. So meditation rooms in the Tibetan tradition, they're called gom pass, places to meditate. And the literal meaning of gom or meditating is to familiarize yourself. So meditation is basically a way to familiarize yourself with a special wisdom thoughts, with a special wisdom recognitions, with a special understandings, views, and intentions that are taught in Buddhist teachings. So that's the purpose of meditating. Meditating has many purposes, you know, like when we meditate, we can calm down a little bit, we can de-stress our mind, detox our mind, become more mindful, blah, 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 blah. But the main purpose is to become more familiar with special ways of thinking, with correct views, correct intentions, correct mental activities. So when you're a little bit familiar, then you can unify your life, whatever you do, with the teachings of Buddha. And then you will receive great help in your daily life. So in this text, in this book, or in many of these books, like Joyful Path on Modern Buddhism, um, we receive very clear instructions for meditation, but then also very clear advice for the meditation break. And this way we can transform whatever um, we experience in our daily life, our encounters with other people, etc., into a spiritual path. So in here, um, there's a lovely chapter on uh, the practice of, uh, what's it called, sorry, how to train our mind during the meditation break when we do not meditate. Jason Kappa, the founder of the New Kadampa lineage, taught that the meditation break is more important than the meditation session. Because our meditation session may last for only a few hours every day, isn't it? <laughs> Joke. But our meditation break is as long as the rest of our life. If we practice well during the meditation break, we will be practicing well for most of our life. And this will greatly improve the concentration that we have in our meditation session. So whether you're not, you're a great meditator, depends to a large deal to what you do during the meditation break. So if what you do during meditation and in your normal life is pulling into two completely unrelated opposite directions, and it's really hard to go back to your meditation and uh, deepen your experience. So during our meditation break, we can use our spiritual understanding or our Dharma wisdom we have gained to transform all our experiences into spiritual practice. If we are able to do this, we will not have to rely 
upon books alone to keep our mind on Dharma when we are not meditating. For example, when we go shopping, we can use our wisdom to see how some things they teach impermanence, some things teach the faults of samsara, some things teach compassion, and some things teach patience. We practice like this, we will bring home many virtuous states of mind. Otherwise, we'll come home from town, we'll be carrying a heavy bag full of delusions. Okay, so the trick is that you need to ask yourself if you have um, a situation with your colleagues, if you have a situation with your partners, with your friends, with your families, or what have you, you need to ask yourself, okay, what's this teaching me? What can I learn from that particular situation? So that's basically the main practice, how to unify Kadam Dharma with everyday life. If you feel inspired by this podcast, then dive deeper into the timeless wisdom of modern Kadampa Buddhism by following the link in the episode description. We look forward to reconnecting with you in the next episode of Kadampa Podcasts.